Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast this morning. My name is Nyamguru Agaji. Today is Wednesday the 29th of May 2024. You know what that means? It means that Nigeria has had democracy, uninterrupted democracy I might add, for 25 good years. It used to be the day we called Democracy Day because this is when the baton changes hands from uh, one government to the other when it is or oh, after four years uh, but now it has been moved to june 12 which uh, is now called democracy day because of uh, what happened the uh, the election of or the annulled election of uh, uh, the uh, late MKO Abiola and all that so people were clamoring for that date to be uh, recognized as a very important date in Nigeria's history so Democracy Day has been moved to June 12 but we still know today 29th of May as the day that uh, power changes hands as it were so after four years of this administration on this day it will change hands but today we're marking the first anniversary of the uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu led administration, federal government, and um, we are looking at the scorecard. We may not be talking so much about it. We are going to wait for him to make that um, uh, speech at the joint sitting of the National Assembly today. Uh, the Assembly members are expected to sit at 9 o'clock and their address will be coming shortly after. So we'll hear what the scorecard is and try to x-ray all those things that he's going to mention as his achievements. We do know that in the first 100 days in office, some governors were giving their scorecards and a lot of people were disappointed in some of the things that they, they enumerated as a uh, uh, part of the achievements in 100 days. 100 days is not uh, is not supposed to be um, a time to rate anybody, so it, we're not going to quarrel about that. But it's just been made a tradition. Everybody wants to uh, give account of what they have been doing in the first 100 days in office. So they gave accounts, and some people were mentioning having state executive council meetings as part of the achievements they have had for uh, the 100 days. Nobody's judging anybody for 100 days in office. Office. If you cannot do much, at least you use 100 days to come out or fashion out a blueprint that will take you through the four years and you are going to give us real governance in those four years. But one year is enough time to see what has been done, what is uh, in the pipeline that is going to be done and whatever else are the challenges that we are likely to face and also a good time to listen to the people and uh, know which policies go down well with your people and which policies are not going down well with your people. So today we'll be listening to our president address the Joint National Assembly and that will be any time from 9 o'clock. So watch out for that and we're going to uh, try to uh, connect with um, that broadcast and bring it to you live. If we're not able to do that, then we're going to bring you excerpts of that transmission uh, on, uh, at a later time. Well, today on the show, we're going to be looking at, um, okay, so like I just said, today used to be um, Democracy Day, but we're going to be looking at uh, the fact that the state court has halted enforcement of federal high court's order of Emir Sanusi's eviction. You know how what is raging in Kano State right now. It's been it's been a, a, a tough uh, few weeks uh, after the pronouncement of the state government that Emir Sanusi has been reinstated from from other uh, parts. Uh, some court orders are flying here and there. Some are conflicting, and I don't know why this keeps happening. Uh, one court will issue one order, the other court will issue a counter order. The courts of the same um, standing, the same jurisdiction, how do they call it in, in, in legal parlance, but of the same status. They are offering or they are issuing different and conflicting orders. One says he should not be enthroned. The other said uh, he must be enthroned. And nobody should uh, uh, disrupt any activity at all. We're getting tired of what is happening in the judiciary. They should get their acts right and let's know that when a pronouncement is made, it has to be obeyed and obeyed to the letter. So today, like I said, it used to be known officially as Democracy Day in Nigeria, marking when the newly elected Olishego Obasanjo took office as president of Nigeria. That is in 1999. 
uh, we celebrate 25 years of unbroken democracy. It was in 2018 when the 29th of on the 29th of uh, uh, when the 29th of May rather became handover day, while the president is set to speak to a joint session of the legislative chamber by 9 a.m. We look at the state of the nation and ask our guests to uh, give assessment as President Tinubu marks the first anniversary of his administration. So uh, don't f don't forget 9 o'clock or shortly after 9 o'clock we'll be listening to that uh, broadcast uh, by or watching that broadcast by the president. Now we're moving to the top trending issues immediately uh, before we take a break for any other thing. The Labour rejects fresh 60,000 Naira minimum wage offer insists on 494. The federal government has added the sum of 3,000 Naira to its initially proposed 57,000 Naira minimum wage, making it the sum of 60,000 Naira proposed on Tuesday during a meeting of the Tripartite Committee on Minimum Wage in Abuja. Organized labor comprising the Trade Union Congress and the Nigeria Labor Congress also went down by 3,000 Naira from its last proposal of uh, 497,000 Naira during the last minimum wage meeting. According to a source who gave the breakdown at the Tuesday meeting, the amount proposed by the government did not go down well with labor leaders. A member of the union noted that organized labor would only go lower if the government went higher on its demands. Okay. So from a million Naira to uh, 615,000 Naira, to 500,000 to 497,000 and all that there's a back and forth so everybody uh, first of all the proposal was for um, 48,000 naira the federal government was it 40, 47,000 naira the federal government now added a, a few more uh, naira a few more thousand about 5 or 6,000 to it and then now they have added another 3,000 to it so from 5,000 addition to 3,000 addition, so, so far they have added 8,000 Naira. Labor also is now borrowing a leaf from them, them uh, if the federal government adds, that's what it seems, federal government adds 3,000, they remove 3,000. You know, if they add 5,000, maybe they will remove 5,000 as well. And we're going to be seeing this back and forth. Today is 29th, which means it's two days to the deadline that uh, was given by Labor to go on strike if... Uh, their conditions are not met. So where will this condition be met? Where is the middle ground that these people need to be met? Uh, truth be told, the reality on ground shows that um, 60,000 is really nothing. Even though the government will say that they cannot pay, 60,000 isn't buying anything. So if we are practical enough, the government should know that uh, 60,000 is more or less like an insult. But on the other hand, I know that it is difficult for the government, it might be difficult for the government, even though they are not showing working, because uh, you can tell me that it's difficult and then you're budgeting for things that uh, are not absolutely necessary at this point, and then uh, er making some people earn humongous amounts of money uh, for doing well, I wouldn't say nothing, but compared to the workers, what the workers do, that is next to nothing. And then you're telling us that we should uh, uh, tighten our belts. I'm not part of that anyway, but um, I'm just saying. So government should show working. So now that I know, I know that there are challenges that the government will be facing. But the fundamental question I always say is that, is the government even asking why the condition is so bad that the people are demanding so high? Now take for instance... If a regular civil servant knows that the child will have quality education in that public primary or secondary school or the tertiary institution, that is like almost half of his problems solved because everybody thinks about their children. They are your future. They are your greatest investment in this life. And then you know that whenever you, 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 you're sick, you, you take ill, you're going to have quality and affordable health care. You know that whenever you want to travel, a lot of people do not work where they, where they come from and they need to go back to the, to the village, as it were, or anywhere else uh, that their family is residing or where they need to be at, from time to time. You know that you can always travel anytime that you want to travel and then it is affordable. 
you cannot fly nowadays because it's so costly you have to plan for the entire year and save like save like almost half of your salary for the uh, person who is earning minimum wage you will have to save like half of your salary every month for the past for the next one year before you can take a a plane from here to abuja or from here to cross river from here to Oweri or something it's it's really it's really very bad so transportation is very high you can't afford it uh, feeding is very high you can't afford uh, to eat three square meals in a day um, you talk about healthcare; it is unreachable to the common man and you're talking about whatever you just mentioned in nigeria now is not affordable so people are just trying to get by so these are the things what is it that the government is bringing to the table at this negotiation? I'm just wondering because we don't have the details of what they have been using as a bargaining chip. Do you just say, okay, we're going to pay this because you have asked this, but we cannot pay it because we don't have money? Are you addressing the issues that make these people demand for so much money? Because if we know that ABC is the reason things are so hard and that's why labor is demanding this much, then we should be looking also while we are negotiating how to fix the ABC. I don't know if that is happening at all. But if a civil servant knows that he is or he is confident that these things are solved in one way or the other, then this demand, outrageous demand, because the, from the government side it will be outrageous demand, from the labor side it will be, you know, a, me, a, a meaningful demand, then it would not come up. But I do hope that 31st, two days from now, we are not going to face another strike. We know people who are still in school now that should have graduated uh, two years ago. But because of the strike of us that lasted for eight uh, months, we had COVID-19 and all that, these people are still in school. And things have gone high. So whoever was paying rent for 100000 for one small room may be paying 300000 now. So you can imagine what the things have become nowadays so this thing should they the action should be ex, uh, the federal government should expedite actions and make sure that these people are met halfway labor to con be considerate and give an amount but i think that maybe any amount above a hundred thousand will will make labor listen i'm not i'm not i'm not the advocate for anybody but if somebody is demanding one million naira and has given you a breakdown of why one million naira has to be what it is of 615,000 and you're negotiating and you're starting with 47,000 naira i mean i don't know so but nigerians don't want another strike that is that is that's the bottom line whether it's from asu whether from nlc tuc whether it's from any organization any organized labor nobody wants a strike in nigeria anymore there should be other ways and when this agreement is reached agreement should be agreement that's what we say in nigeria but in a situation where a state like a do state has started the payment of 70,000 naira minimum wage i think the federal government will sound like a joke if they are offering 60,000 or anything below the 70,000 i'm just saying but let the uh, uh, middle ground be found and let there be no strike okay the second thing is that the senate pardons uh, and recalls suspended senator abdul ningi the Senate has pardoned and recalled Senator Abdul Ahmed Ningi, who was suspended on March 12, 2024. The recall process was initiated on Tuesday after a motion moved by Deputy Minority Leader Senator Abamoro, who expressed regret on behalf of the suspended senator. He pledged to assume full responsibility for Ningi's actions, acknowledging the gravity of the suspension. The senator's conduct during the period of suspension has been a matter of scrutiny and debate within the legislative body. The president of the Senate, Gatswila Pabio, announced the unconditional recall of Ningi after a brief plea by some lawmakers. Akwabio emphasized the senator's resourcefulness and described him as a valued member of the Senate, adding that the decision to recall Ningi transcends religious and ethnic divides. Ningi was recalled some two weeks to the end of his uh, three-month suspension, which is supposed to terminate on June 12, 2024. On March 12, 2024, the Senate suspended Ningi over allegations of 3.7 trillion naira padding of the 2024 budget. Ningi of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, from Bauchi Central Senatorial District, was suspended for three months after a long stormy session in the Red Chamber.
said Senator Abdul Ahmed Ninge, being under suspension, has spent over two months outside the precincts of the National Assembly complex and needs to return to continue with his legislative activities as a senator representing Bachi's Central Senatorial District. Flowing from the above, the Senate Minority Leadership takes full responsibility for the actions of our colleague Senator Abdul Ahmed Ningi and apologizes on his behalf. Accordingly, the Senate resolves to reconsider the additional resolution of the Senate 1 of the votes and proceedings of Wednesday, 13 March 2024 to recall Senator Abdul Ahmed Ningi to the Senate as Senator representing Bauchi Central Senatorial District. I so move, Mr. Our distinguished brother, Senator Abdul Ningi, be recalled from his suspension following this very important motion from the minority leader on behalf of the minority caucus. Senator Abdul Ningi, no doubt, is our friend and is somebody we cherish so much. The spirit of this motion has met the demand and request of this Senate previously. An apology should be given for that unfortunate interview where we are almost put on the spot as if we did things we did not do. So uh, in the spirit of uh, brotherhood, I rise to wholeheartedly so, uh, support that this Senate should recall Abdul Ningi for the few uh, weeks left of this suspension so that we rejoin us and continue to contribute robustly to the debates we do have in this plenary uh, on motions and uh, bills. I support without any reservation. I urge the Senate, I urge the Senate, having apologized, the leadership having apologized on behalf of our Senator Ningi, we should accept this apology so as to strengthen our spirit of brotherhood that we are known for. Something has been done, and uh, the leadership on his own has come out to apologize on his behalf. So I urge my colleagues to please accept this apology without debate so that we can move forward. We are all brothers. And as I said earlier, you know, making error is something that is human. And forgiveness is divine. So I therefore submit that uh, please, we should urge, I mean, I urge my colleagues to accept this apology so that we can move forward. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, congratulations to uh, Ahmed Ningi. Uh, he has been pardoned and he will be called back. Uh, the question is for the past three months, that means that the people that he was representing at the National Assembly had no voice. And that is the democracy we're talking about. Democracy is about uh, the people having a voice in the governance of the country. Uh, the people uh, being represented at the National Assembly will have a voice and they will speak out, no matter what it is. So which means the people of Bauchi Central, where he comes from, were not represented for three months straight. So whatever decision was taken, uh, a part of Nigeria was not part of that decision. And that was because he raised an alarm of something he was not very clear about. And if I recall correctly, on that very day he raised the alarm, that was where uh, hell was let loose by the National Assembly or the Senate that he did not do the right thing and it led to his suspension. I can't remember what an outcome was, what the outcome was, if there was ever any investigation uh, that, or someone ever promised that, okay, we're going to look into this and see why you were not clear and then explain. So even if there was, an, uh, there was a statement like that, so if someone was not clear about uh, an information and you had a better explanation, you would just simply give it. Uh, I don't know why he needed to be suspended for three months, and, but we are glad that he's back now. The people of Bauchi Central can be represented once again. Whatever has passed has passed. We do hope that there will be this synergy and all that. But I don't know how Senator Ningi will uh, function now if he will have, because he showed a spirit of someone who, who doesn't want to be cowed. He, he, he will not be cowed because of a, anything, so he will speak out. That's how he presented himself. I don't know if he will still go back to the Senate with that uh, spirit or he has been 
uh, you know, gagged or something, I don't know. I hope that he will function optimally as everybody is describing him as a resourceful person. I hope that he will bring that resourcefulness again back to the Senate and be outspoken enough, uh, well, except for the fear that he might be suspended once more. Maybe this time it will be for a year or for the entire tenure. And I don't know if the National Assembly has uh, that constitutional right to suspend a whole senatorial district uh, from being in the National Assembly to, to say and have a say in whatever is happening there. Because as it were, wherever he's uh, representing is the one that has been suspended for three months now, not Ningi. Ningi is the voice of where he comes from. So maybe the, the powers in the National Assembly are so much that you can just single out a, a, a section of Nigeria and tell them to shut up for three months and then bring him back or bring them back because uh, you feel they have been remorseful about it. Well, what do I know? Now, the Senate passes bill to revert to old national anthem, Nigeria, we hail thee. That is what is really trending right now. Everybody is talking about this. The Senate has passed the national anthem bill 2024 to revert to the old national anthem, Nigeria, we hail thee. The bill, which speedily passed first and second readings on Thursday, now awaits assent into law by President Bola Tinubu. The Senate passed legislation to swap the national anthem from Arizo compatriots to Nigeria, we hail thee. The old anthem composed when Nigeria gained independence on October 1, 1960, will replace the current anthem. The bill seeks to revive the anthem that was dropped in 1978 during Olusegun Obasanjo's military administration. Lillian John Williams, a British expatriate who lived in Nigeria during its independence, penned the lyrics for Nigeria, We Hail Thee, while Francis Berda composed the music. The anthem played a significant role in shaping Nigeria's national identity and unity during the 1960s and late 1970s. Senate leader Okoyemi Bamidele emphasized the anthem's impact. He said, upon rendition, it inspired deep patriotism among Nigerians. Those who lived through that era recognize its crucial role in our nation's history, evoking nostalgia and fond memories of our early years. On Monday, the Senate began a public hearing on an act to provide for the national anthem of Nigeria and related matters. Bamidele, who represented the president of the Senate, Gatswila Pabio, at the hearing, said the second stanza of the existing national anthem shall be the national prayer. However, he said, if considered necessary, further consultation would be had on the matter. In his contribution, Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Latif Fagbemi, said the amendments should not come only by legislative fiat, but should be subjected to a wider consultation. He stated that the reversal was not out of place, but should involve a wider process to ensure it is a true reflection of the generality of the wishes of all Nigerians. Meanwhile, a senior advocate of Nigeria, Mike Ezekome, pointed out one of the lines from the previous anthem which addresses the issue of oppression while corroborating with the Director General of the National Orientation Agency that the change of the nation's anthem was long overdue. He recalled that the mooted, uh, he mooted the idea of changing the anthem 10 years ago at the 2014 CONFAP through a motion and the 490 delegates debated it and supported it. According to him, the present Nigerian flag of green, white, green is too bland and not inspirational compared to that of the U.S. and South Africa. Last week, the bill seeking to make a provision for Nigeria to revert to its old national anthem, Nigeria we hail the scaled through a second reading at the Senate before it was eventually passed on Tuesday. The House of Representatives has passed the bill for the return to the old anthem to take effective uh, effect the bill will have to be harmonized by the two chambers and get the president's nod. Okay, uh, national anthem, the old national anthem. I have always liked the old national anthem, but it doesn't make the new national anthem a bad one. Uh, the new national anthem, which started in uh, uh, 1978, as according to history, calls on Nigerians to rise to their responsibility and serve their nation with honor, serve their nation with all their strength, 
with love and everything uh, in their being to serve their nation. Yet our people may not be serving the nation as it is. I do hope that if this eventually, whether or not it eventually uh, is being assented to, I do hope that this is the beginning of a renaissance, sort of. This is the beginning of reorientation and a lot of other programs should be put in place to make sure that we cultivate that patriotism in our children and in ourselves because it goes beyond just muting the words. That is why I say sometimes, I say that uh, you could single out a particular ethnic group and say these people are very respectful. Well, uh, tradition is not respect. If, for instance, the tradition demands that when you're, when you're greeting someone, you bow down to the person, it doesn't mean you respect that person. It's just the tradition that is telling you, bow down. And the person whose tradition is to wave at the, uh, the, the next person, it doesn't mean that they respect you less. Uh, the person who calls you by name does not mean that it, he respects you less. Uh, because I have seen people saying, uncle, you are a fool. You know, you're calling uncle and you're saying you're a fool. You're calling brother and you're saying you're a stupid person. You're calling all sorts of names because your tradition requires you not to call your elder by name, but you attach that uh, name or title to the person. You're a fool, you're a, you're a stupid person and all that. So tradition is not respect. So if we mute the words, we call the uncle, they call the aunties and all that. If we use the words that are in that national anthem and there's no national reorientation of the people to be patriotic to the flag and to the name Nigeria, then we've done nothing, absolutely nothing. I have no problem with the green, white, green. I, I think it's a, it's a cool color or there are cool colors in the, in, the, in the flag. It doesn't have to be so busy like the national, uh, the flag of America, 50 stars and, and lines and all that. Uh, what is, is it Korea or Japan, one of these countries, has just a red dot in the middle of a white, uh, white background? Does it make them inferior to us? Have, we have two colors as well. Does it make them inferior to other countries because their national flag is not very busy? That's not our problem. The national flag is fine. By, that's my opinion. It's not um, what I have been sent to say, but that's my opinion. The national flag is fine as it is. Green, white, green. You know, abundance and everything. It reminds us how fertile we are as a country and how peaceful our people are. Because if we were not peaceful, a lot of things happening now would not happen. We know that uh, a lot of uh, countries had uprising because of the cost of bread. We are not doing that. We are peaceful people and we continue to be peaceful. So look, I have no problem with the flag. I have no problem with changing the national anthem or staying with the, the new one that we have, which is Arizo Compatriots and all that. But the reorientation of the people of Nigeria has to be uh, top on our agenda. When we were growing up, when I was growing up, I don't know about you, uh, every morning in school, we would gather around the flag of Nigeria and sing the national anthem looking up at the flag. I don't know how many schools still do that now. I know that schools, especially the private institutions, all have their own anthems, which they take, um, they take as more important even than the national anthem and all that. So how do you begin to cultivate patriotism in a country when people are not even taught the basics? How many people still stand at attention when people are not looking when they hear the national anthem being sung? We were standing at attention. Uh, in your village where the army is not there, the police is not there, nobody's looking, but you hear the anthem on the radio, you stand at attention. You just stand there and you don't move. That's what we were taught. Now, it doesn't mean that you know, maybe a bull is coming your way, a lion is coming your way, you'll have to stand there, but it just showed us when we we're growing up up as very young people that whenever the name of Nigeria is mentioned you should respect it with all your being so that is why we were standing up and it's like you watching a superhero movie when you were you are small all your life you'll be thinking about uh, the, if I grow up when I grow up I will be a superman I'll be saving people I will it just builds something in your psyche telling you that uh, there are people out there that need your help it's not uh, always right to be selfish thinking about yourself alone so let's build this patriotism in our children and in ourselves let's try to show good examples so that the children coming up will know that this Nigeria 
is our country and we need to protect it we need to work towards its greatness and everything otherwise we could change national anthem 20 times and will still remain the same we have laws in nigeria that are some of the best laws in the world are we implementing them we may not be implementing them and that's why we are what we are the court rules here uh, the police does something else dss does something else on the same matter efcc does something else on the same matter icpc does something else the people themselves do something else today you go on x to complain about a thing maybe a government policy or you complain about something that may be true and then there are like 7 10 20 people dedicated to wash you down to talk you down and all that nobody's thinking about constructive criticism nowadays nobody's talking about looking at the big picture nobody's talking about um the fact that nigeria has to grow it doesn't matter where you come from whether you are north south east or west it doesn't matter where you come from bring solutions to nigeria and we will follow you nobody's talking about that so some people are even saying that instead of uh, a particular person or particular group of people coming into power, we should go back to colonial rule because the British were doing better. British are not Igbo, British are not Hausa, British are not Yoruba, British are not Ekajuk where I come from, British are not Nigerian. So why would you hate your brother so much and then love someone who is coming from, from the shores of, uh, from another place entirely to come and govern us because you just feel that if it is not my brother it, ha it doesn't have to be any other person that is around and all that it's these are the fundamental things that we need to be addressing so national anthem yes very good uh, it means that someone is thinking someone somewhere is thinking about the fact that uh, we need to re-engineer our thinking uh, about our country and we need to start by that national prayer as it is that national pledge as it is that national anthem as it is um, but let other things follow very very closely uh, it shouldn't just be changing of the national anthem that's my take anyway orientation is very key national orientation sit up and let nigerians hear you People do not even know who is uh, superintending over that ministry. People don't even know who is the DG National Orientation Agency, except some people who actually listen to the news. But we've had some that we didn't need to listen to the news. We just, we just knew that someone is working and everybody was talk, uh, talking about them, the National Orientation Agency, and not even just the individual who was in charge of that place. So sit up. Nigerians rely a lot on you so that we can get some things right. Don't leave it to INEC, don't leave it to the National Assembly, don't leave it to anything. You are the one who changes the psyche of Nigerians. So, I call on all Nigerians, people who are policymakers and all that, that as we are talking about the national anthem change, we should be talking about every other thing that will help us build patriotism in our people, especially those who are coming up, the children who are coming up from primary school, secondary school, and eventually will get into the tertiary institution. Let us be saying Nigeria has happened to us and be proud and beat our chest that if Nigeria happens to you, you are better for it. Now, when someone says Nigeria has happened to you, there must be one something, one thing or the other that will just break your heart if you find out what has happened to an individual because of seeming carelessness or unpatriotism of one person or a group of persons. Anyway, good luck Nigeria and happy anniversary, 25th anniversary of unbroken democracy in our country. We'll take a short break, a look at some of the things, the weather and the rest, and then return in a moment for the paper review. Stay with us. <music>